the old Vauxhall Frontera was generally acknowledged to be a pile of old rubbish. It fell somewhere awkwardly between the lightweight off-roaders and the heavyweights in price, specification and capability. That makes it all the more surprising that Vauxhall took the decision to make the new Frontera closely resemble its somewhat useless predecessor. Having said that, it's still a pretty handsome car. This is the new long wheelbase, it's the V6 Limited, it's the top of the range, leather everywhere, and I'm going to get my muddy boots all over it. The new Frontera has been widely praised for the improvements to the ride on the road and in this the long wheelbase version, well, whilst a long wheelbase may bring penalties off the road, on the road, that goes even further to ironing out the choppiness that might be associated with the short wheelbase 4x4. That means it's actually quite a civilised place to be. Despite being so high up and all the advantages of a 4x4 for that commanding driving position, you could genuinely almost be in an ordinary family saloon. And that air of civilization is added to by the pretty high specification. This is a top spec version, but we've got electric and heated mirrors, heated seats to keep your body warm in winter, and pretty much every other gizmo you're going to want. The only thing lacking, and is lacking in every Vauxhall, is a sunroof, but then we do have air conditioning in here, so you can live without some luxuries. This that we're driving today is the V6 engine version, and it's a lovely engine. Very smooth, very powerful, very torquey, and it makes a great snarly noise. Mated in this instance to an automatic gearbox, four speed, very smooth, changes very nicely. You can get a five speed manual with the V6. Also available is a 2.2 litre engine, which obviously has to be worked a little harder, but is perfectly capable, and that's available with a manual gearbox. You can get into one of these for less than £19,000 with the smaller engine version and perhaps lose a few of the bells and whistles. Now that's Land Rover Freelander territory and to my mind this feels far more substantial both on and off the road. It has a greater presence. It's actually a bigger car. Sure, as a 4x4 it can't compete with the top dogs, the likes of the Toyota Amazon, but then they're up to twice the price. So you still do get what you pay for and in the case of the Frontera I think you get perhaps a little bit more. This is a 4x4 vehicle. Throwing it through bends at enormous speed is never going to be a good idea, but with the V6 and with the 2.2, it's quite capable. There's more than enough power. It'll cruise very happily at uh, easily at motorway speeds, and through the corners, it's actually very controlled. It controls its substantial body weight very well. It doesn't move around too much. It's all held down really quite well. The suspension has been pretty well sorted. It may not be fair to hark on about the car's less than illustrious predecessors, but I'm going to do it anyway. And face it, the previous Frontera rattle shook and fell apart at the least provocation. Vauxhall say the new one won't, and looking at it, I think they're probably right. On the inside, it feels substantial and well put together, though not exactly interesting, it has to be said. The dash particularly is stupendously bland. Functional, no doubt, well laid out, no doubt, and probably not that rattly but bland, definitely. Where it does score big points is in the back. It's cavernous. It shames cars substantially larger. There's an enormous amount of leg space, even with the seats in the front set a fair way back. Headroom is certainly not in short supply, and overall you do feel not only high up, but for once, like there's plenty of space around you. If you're tired of climbing into 4 by 4s the size of houses, only to find that inside there's as much room as a Wendy house, this is going to come as quite a refreshing change for you. Now the good news for space doesn't end there. At the back, this boot is enormous, and I mean cavernous. This split opening tailgate in a Range Rover style is very handy in the supermarket car parks. The bottom half swings out like that. And one reason there's so much space in the boot is that the spare wheel has very sensibly been put here rather than inside, taking up half your useful boot space. The new Frontera's off-road credentials seem fine. It has a proper selection between high and low on the four-wheel drive system, and it can be remotely switched in and out of two- and four-wheel drive. There are two different modes, for sport or for slippery conditions driving, all of which means it is pretty capable on the rough stuff.
Where the Frontera starts to really make sense and win out against the opposition is when you bring the price into the equation. Bear in mind, this is the top spec, top of the range. It's the V6 Limited Long Wheelbase. That makes it a pretty special. As we've seen, it's pretty highly specified. And bear in mind that it feels as substantial as 4 x is effectively a class up as the real big boys of the 4 x world. And then look at the price. For this version, with an automatic gearbox, you're going to be looking at about £24,000. £1,000 less for the manual gearbox version. And that really is the kind of money you'd expect to pay for a lightweight 4x4 with a load of extra kit on. Not what you'd expect to pay for something that can compete with the big boys. That's when the Frontera really starts to win out. And well done to Vauxhall. It's also a car that doesn't mind getting its feet wet. 